What's going on, everybody? This is Drew here. I want to welcome you all to a brand new episode of Phoenix Down. This is Phoenix Down 127.1, and we are continuing our playthrough of Dead Space 2023 version for the Nightmare Before Christmas. Today I have with me Matt. Hello. It's pre-Christmas indeed. This is uh, certainly the last recording before Christmas. Yeah, this is what this is the the twenty first. So yeah, we've got uh, four more days until the big Christmas day, and um, yeah, we're playing some Dead Space. Um, I want to ask you because you, you uh, you're about halfway through the game so far, yeah. and I know you've always been a big Resident Evil fan. Definitely. Which one's better? Resident Evil 4 remake or Dead Space remake? Currently. I gotta say Resident Evil 4 remake, yeah. you know, between the two. Right? Just because it it does more. Like, I think this is a great game. I mean, it was a great game to start with. Mm-hmm. And this seems like a pretty good update, both visually and, you know, a lot of the little things that have been updated to make the game easier to play, less repetitive, etc. But but I think the well, to be fair, I, I think I think Resident Evil 4 started off better and had a bigger improvement. And this started off really strong and has a good improvement. But Resident Evil, I think it is more interesting. I think the combat is more thrilling. I think the balance is better. The, you know, the level design. There's more levels. There's more variety. You go to crazy places. Um, you know, the, the characters are even the even the enemies are far more interesting. Sure. Both the well, the you know the human enemies. The necromorphs are 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 fine as an enemy. I I think they make more sense in the remake. Maybe only because they are more clearly, at least to me, more clearly derived from the people. I mean, they talk about it so far multiple times in this game, like, oh, that, you know, I saw that face. That was definitely Chen or whoever. Yeah. You know, and then watching the captain change, you know, that that feels fairly height, if if you will, in that, you know, the, the enemies fit... What's happening? You know, I don't. I don't know if there's more backstory in this version. I think there is. Um, you know, but they they do try to give you a lot of explanation. There's a lot of research, so that that part of it I think is done well here. But also, you know, the attempt to maybe make it a little bit more realistic. I mean, Resident Evil is a little bit more ridiculous, I guess. Sure. I mean, it, it always has been. Certainly, when you get to like six, you know, it, it goes off the rails a little bit. Gets it just gets. It just gets ridiculous. Um, you know, Dead Space certainly feels more serious of a game. But also then I would have wanted a little bit more explanation for some of the, you know, why are there so many enemy types? You know, it's not like Alien, if you will, where every time a, a xenomorph inhabits a different type of animal or person or, or whatever, you get a new type of, of alien. Here... It, unless I missed it, is there an explanation for why you have big enemies versus small enemies versus ones with exploding grenade arms versus any of the other types? I, I, is there an I, explanation for what, what spawns what? I'm not entirely sure. Um, it, it makes you think that it's some kind of a virus or a mutation that's doing this to people. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm guessing it, it, it kind of is the, you know, the thing essentially. Um, I think you said in here, you know, it, you know, it's, it's got some aspects of a virus and some aspects of a bacteria, you know, I, I guess I'm not too concerned about the, the science of it, if you will, but, but the game takes itself seriously enough that I, I would have thought they would have built in explanations for like, you know, maybe men turned into this type and women turned into that type or, or, you know, or something that at least defines what type of monster you get out of a infected person. Sure. 
No, I, I, I get Resident that. Evil, I wouldn't really expect that because it's, you know, it's just a bit more ridiculous. You just go with the fact that it's a, you know, it, it's some new variant of the virus and maybe nobody knows how it works. Well, they did have that one explanation. One, one of my favorite explanations uh, from Resident Evil is the Crimson Heads. If you remember how they explained that. Um, so to, to explain, I think we've played Resident Evil remake for Phoenix Down before, but um, basically if you kill a zombie and you don't destroy the brain, uh, it can reanimate. Um, but when you shoot it full of holes, it the wounds make the blood drain to the head, to the brain, and it turns it into a crimson head, which then makes it just go wild. And I mean, they had that, that small little blurb, like really added flavor to Resident Evil remake. Yeah. It doesn't matter if that makes sense, but it's a rule anyway. You know, that's the thing. I I assume that's in dead space somewhere, just given how much lore there is and, you know, it's got to be in there somewhere, but I, I, I don't know. Overall, I just, you know, I think as, as a game, the the fun factor, I think maybe is a little higher in Resident Evil 4. Um, you know, the only thing that I, I really had a problem with in the first game here has been addressed, you know, the, you know, kind of the cyclical nature of the level design. But, I, you know, that, that's one of the things that I would say makes this a, a pretty good remake. Yeah. I, I, you know, so far I would, I would agree with you. I think I prefer Resident Evil 4 remake over this remake. I think they're both fantastic. Um, this one, yeah, looks, it's a good baseline when they're both good. <laughs> yeah. But, but I mean, I think, I think Dead Space looks amazing. Um, I think it still plays great. And that's the thing is like, there's only so far you can go with like a game like Dead Space. You know, Dead Space was a damn really good game. I would say damn near perfect in some instances. Um, and you know, you can't really improve on that a lot, you know, where with you, with Resident Evil four, there was a lot of changes to that game. You know, like if you remember correctly, the original Resident Evil four, you couldn't aim and move at the same time and stuff like that. So there's, there's fundamental changes that took place, uh, with dead space. I mean, I feel like this space kind of plays the exact same as it did on the 360. Yeah, yeah I think so. so it was that, good, you know. Yeah, it didn't need to change as much. Yeah. So the I, only thing I think they could have done here, if they really wanted to blow this out, is like add whole levels. Right. It, that that would have been something that would have been a crazy draw to this game, I think, because again, most of this game is corridor to corridor. You know, it's yeah. corridor to big room to corridor to big room. Well, I mean, you, you you're kind of you're kind of restricted on what you can do there because you're on a spaceship. You know. Yeah. Aside from like going to the planet, or you know, having right like there's a section where we go to hydroponics that could have been a full on forest. Sure. Right, you know, if they they could have literally made a forest level and just said, "This is the room." It was so important that they had a, you know, what what we get is corridors with little hydroponics tanks basically in it. So yeah. that works. It's clearly hydroponics, but you know, it's it's ten percent different from any other corridor rather than a hundred percent different. Right. You know, not that they needed to do that though, because the the base game is so strong. But they, in in you know, I, in I I say that would have been. A bigger change. I don't know that that necessarily would have been a better change because, you know, you, you've got a pretty good core here. If you start messing with it, you know, maybe you inadvertently lose what makes it so good to start with. I don't know. Right. So I, I don't even know if I would have wanted those things, but what what it is is really good. Yeah. Really. And I, the thing that still kills me, even just today, I was like, literally staring at a, at a light, and I'm just like. The, the the volumetric lighting in this game is so cool because it's so diffuse and you can see again the the dust in the air and it, it really makes it a full 3D cone of light and I just I don't know that it's done better than other games but it, it, it seems to be more obvious to me in this game than in other games 
It's definitely because the game's so stinking dark. You can see pretty much everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Light, you know, light plays a pretty big role, definitely. Yeah. So, um, chapter three is where we ended. I was at the beginning of it. Um, basically, what we need to do here is uh, we need to turn the engines back on. Um, and the reason why is because uh, since this disaster has happened, uh, the ship itself is slowly uh, making its way back toward the planet, which is Aegis 7? Aegis 7, yep. Yeah, Aegis 7. Uh, and if we don't turn the engines back on and start pushing ourselves away from the planet, we will go full on to what they call planet fall, which is just, uh, I guess, burn up in the atmosphere upon reentry, crashing on the planet. Definitely not a good time. So we're going to need to stop that. Well, the engines have been turned off. Um, and, uh, all the refueling has been disabled. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it was because did you get the, the, it wasn't audio. It was actually like a video playback of what happened. So they basically staged uh, a mutiny. I think so. So seems to be what happened was, was that they found this marker on this planet. There is a, so I guess the markers are, are known or maybe this is the first marker we found, but we've known about them because of this religion that is going around. The way I understand it is that the, the religion started first and the the symbols of the religion were in the same shape as the marker. I don't think there was any evidence of a marker until later. Uh, it, maybe this was the first one, but I, I think finding that is what really convinced people we were right the whole time. Everything right. this religion says is true because how could we have known that there would ever be a marker? Now we found it, and it, it fits everything that we've always said in the religion. So. It's, you know, it's it's interesting just in the general terms of religion often requires faith in the absence of evidence. You know, what happens when you get that evidence? Right. You know, in, in, in this case, it, you know, <laughs> it happens to have really solidified their kind of fanatical ways. Definitely. But yeah, yeah so... it, it, interesting to me that the religion was first and then they found the marker later. So the captain, well, didn't they say that the markers can influence people? Definitely. So the, the captain, uh, who follows this religion, um, when they discovered the marker was like, we need to take this marker and, and, and take it to like, I don't, I don't know where earth or wherever. Um, and at this point, people were starting to be affected by the marker. They started seeing the monsters and were like, no, we need to get the hell out of here. And so they tried to stage a mutiny and they accidentally ended up killing the captain. They were going to sedate him okay. and he attacked the guy with the needle and the guy accidentally stabbed him in the eyeball with the needle and killed him. <laughs> um, and then they're like, we're going to have to take you in. It, yeah, so, I, I thought it was funny that that conversation continued after the captain died. Well, yeah, I was just like, "What? Like, you were on his side until you, he accidentally killed the captain." <laughs> so, I guess I, I, I don't know what exactly happened, but the, some of the crew members decided to stop the engines. Um. I guess because they I, they figured it was too far gone and they didn't want this spreading to other civilizations. Were they trying to induce the decaying orbit? Like trying to destroy the whole Ishimura? Or did they just not want it leaving? That Maybe just not want it leaving? Yeah. If that's the case, why send out the distress signal? For repairs? I guess he probably had multiple factions 
I'm sure you probably did. I think it when they're like over over like two thousand people were on this ship. I can't remember. Big operation. But yeah. So um we gotta turn the engines back on, otherwise we're just gonna crash onto the planet. So uh we gotta refuel the engines first. Um that's when we have to go it's it's weird. It's like this. It's, it's like this large like engine room, and on both sides of it are the fueling stations, and you got to bring both fueling stations back online. Um, but in doing so, you have to cut the power to certain things. So I think is this the one where you get the option to cut the power to the life supply or the lights? Yeah, I think so. And so, of course, I chose to turn off the lights. I was going to say, that makes this section very dark. Yes. And, of course, when you turn out the lights, here comes everybody. <laughs> One of the things, and I, I assume it was in the first game, but when it's really dark, and I and I notice this mostly on the bodies after you kill them, you can see the eyes kind of reflecting lights. Mm -hmm. That's really creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, even even maybe more so than the rest of it. They don't ever... I don't think use it to its full advantage. Like, I don't think there's anywhere where you only, see, you know, I'm thinking something like pitch black or something where you see the eyes and then you're like, all right, I can take that guy out. And then all of a sudden you see 20 pairs of eyes or something like that. And you're like, oh shit, maybe I can't. Right. Like, so I don't, I don't think they use that little piece of it, but I did notice that even in like the pitch blackest rooms, you can see the eyes reflecting and that's, that's kind of cool. I'll tell you this this reminds me and I always bring this up when it comes to lighting and actual darkness I f I feel like the game that does it the best was Dragon's Dogma Did you play Dragon's Dogma Matt? Well, I don't think so no I have it but Dragon's Dogma uses nighttime cuz at the beginning of the game, you go to like the city, right? And everybody in the city, you know, there's always those NPC blurbs of like, yeah, don't go out at night. Don't go out at night. It's bad stuff happens at night. Well, you finally get a quest that makes you travel to the point where it, is, it takes you an entire day to do it. So you'll have to travel at night. You'll have to be out at night. And when you go out at night in that game, it is pitch black. You can't see anything. Yeah. And one of the coolest things ever. So you got you got you and your party members who are like these pawns that you can bring along with you. Well, the pawns will say stuff sometimes. And I remember I was walking through the woods. It's nighttime. I'm trying to get to my objective. And uh, one of my pawns is like, I think there's something around us. And one of the classes in the game is like a magical archer. And one of the abilities is using like a light arrow. And I shot a light arrow just directly in front of me. And as the light was like shining, like just, you know, it's only like a split second when I shoot an arrow, I could like see flare almost right. Yeah. Like a flare. I could see I was almost surrounded by stuff and I was like, Oh God. And I just started in the dark <laughs> pretty, pretty much. And I was like, that is like one of the coolest moments I've had in a video game. Like how it's they, awesome. how they utilize darkness in that game is, is amazing. Like it's like it would be if you were like in, you know, a fantasy medieval world. There's no light pollution, and you go Those outside it. Yeah, you go outside at night, and it's just freaking pitch black. You know, you can't see anything. But anyway, yeah, That's um, cool. Now, yeah, Dragon's Dog, my man. I, I I never finished that game, and I really wish I would go back and finish it. But uh, and Dragon's Dogma Two is coming out soon. Well, not soon, but coming. <laughs> but um, yeah the, no, the lighting effects in this game are amazing and they really like to do the whole do you want to turn off the lights well you're going to have to <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah turn off the lights had to travel from one pump to the other of course there's monsters coming out everywhere if I have the option to turn off the lights or turn off my air supply, I'm going to do that because I have not upgraded my suit at all. So I, in I finally fact, have, but 
I don't have. know that I've gained any actual benefit from it. So, what, what are you talking about? Like, you've put nodes in your suit, or you've got a new right. suit? Most. Okay. So, I've got a new suit. I think I'm on, like, level two suit? Yeah, I, I think I'm also on level two. Yeah. Um, but, um... I haven't put any nodes into my suit because if I get a new suit, then all my nodes don't carry over. At least I don't think they do. And so that kind of sucks. So I've just been upgrading my plasma cutter. I am literally... So you know how your weapons, you can find a new schematic that will allow you to do an upgrade, like a special upgrade. I've gotten two special upgrades for the plasma cutter. Uh, one is... Uh, my shots now do damage over time because they're heated. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then I don't the, think I found a second one. Yeah, I found a second one. Um, there's three in all for each weapon. Um, and then the, f the first upgrade is increasing, significantly increasing the carrying capacity, like, like the, the, how much you can have in a clip. Uh, so now I think I'm at, have. I'm at 18 shots I can keep um, and then also my shots do damage over time so I have all the nodes filled so far there's still one tree branch that I can't go down until I get the third upgrade and I've looked up what the third upgrade is and beefy. it's awesome do you know what it is? no it's called weighted blades and it makes it to where when you melee with your plasma cutter equipped, it is an instant knockdown. Oh, wow. So if, a, if you got a regular necromorph, not a, not a boss or a big brute guy or something like that, but a regular necromorph is standing in front of you and you swing your plasma cutter, it's a guaranteed prone, knock them prone, knock them down. Well, that, uh, that not only sounds powerful, but it sounds like it changes the way you would approach a battle. Exactly. Since I, I generally don't ever get close to the enemies unless I, unless I have to. Exactly. And if you get surrounded, well, I'm just going to start swinging. Um, and I, I assume that it, it's not just you have to find all three to hit that. I assume that I would need to specifically find the third one, and it wouldn't yes. matter if I missed the second one. Yeah, so if you get... So I've got two of them so far, and when you install it, it opens up a new branch that you can put nodes in and then the final node will be the special ability. And there's one going down. So like if you look at the skill tree, there's one that goes far right, there's one that goes up and there's one that goes down. I haven't got the one that goes down yet. The weighted blades is what it's called. And you don't get it until chapter 8. Um, okay. Or you can't find it until chapter 8 is what I've read. Because I'm like, look, I'm going all in on this plasma cutter. I just want to know, where can I find all the upgrades? That's all I want to know. That's it. I don't care about anything else. So, I'm going to have that thing fully upgraded. You said you sold upgraded. the other weapons. What's that now? You said last time that you sold the other weapons? I, miss, I misspoken. Um, that was that was a lie. Uh, I okay, because I was I, like, man, yeah. I can't figure it out. <laughs> no, I put them in stores, but I sold all the ammo. I was I was yeah, misremembering, right. gotcha. basically. Which the yeah, like I, the only thing I can figure out how to do I, uh, for a while I couldn't figure out I was trying to just unequip them, and I I don't think there's a way to just un like take a weapon off of your your quick wheel quick selection wheel. So I. I ran into both of those as real struggles trying with the menu. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It feels like there should be an option that says unequip. There isn't. It feels hmm. like there should be a button that says sell. There isn't. I don't understand what's going on here. Yeah, so I, I, I don't think you can unequip. I think the only way to unequip it is to put it in your inventory. And then that will automatically take it off of your, your wheel. That may be the case. I'm not sure. If that's the case, then what if you had five weapons? Well, I think you could always assign over something else. And that would probably knock it out of the wheel. 
Gotcha. But I don't think you can just there, there's there's no option to just select it and say unequip. Gotcha. Okay. Which you know just 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 weird. Like I guess it doesn't really matter. It's just weird that such a a standard thing wasn't possible. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't. I'm, been... I'm running with a full four though. I've got the uh, like the plasma beam, the pulse rifle, the line gun, and the plasma cutter. Okay, so all right, all right. Which one's the plasma beam? Um, what does it do? It just shoots out like a like a Ghostbusters style string of like a like a laser beam okay but like a a little bit of like a liquid laser beam so if you move left and right it kind of sways it's not like a like an actual laser more like a water cannon so what does it do does it melt enemies or like this is is also just like a cut cutting mechanic as well yeah i think it's just a cutting mechanic but it it's pretty powerful like if you had one thing that you just needed to do massive damage to, it feels like this would be the fastest way to do damage. Gotcha. And is there a secondary fire for it? Uh, I think... I'm sure there is. I haven't used it. Okay. Been good for crowd control a little bit, because you can just kind of sweep it left and right. And it's been good. I've used it a couple of times when you get all of those... Little tiny bat looking things. Mm hmm. Yeah. That come after you. And I've used it on, you know, some of. Uh, are they called brutes? The real big ones? That yeah, are like the, the big, boss fights? Yeah, the big guy, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, it's pretty satisfying to stasis one of those and then pull up this, like, beam on, the, in, on its back and just shred the thing in, like, in two seconds instead. Damn, I, th- I feel like I'm missing out. I've been using that actually as my default lately because I'm I'm saving up line gun ammo for a big fight or a boss fight. Um, I'm using whenever you know things start to get tight. I'm using the the standard plasma cutter, and then I'm using the pulse rifle more for you know low stress activities. Like if I need to take out a giant orange sack to free up a doorway, I'll use the pulse rifle or I'll keep that around just in case I need to pop off a couple of shots randomly before I switch to something else. But so I'm actually using all four weapons pretty regularly throughout throughout the game right now. So I feel like I've got a pretty good mix depending on the situation. Gotcha. I always loved the line gun. That line gun was always awesome. You could you yeah, could the, cool. little, the little baby thing with the three tentacles with a line gun. You could kill that thing in one shot. Yeah, that's nice. So I don't know, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sticking to it. I've I've sold all other <laughs> ammo and I'm just using plasma cutter. And I've got that thing beefed up now, man. Like since I'm using only my note, all my nodes for just the plasma cutter, that sucker does some damage. That's I what cut. I was gonna say. I feel like I'm missing out on that because my nodes are spread out so far that no weapon is all that great. But you know the the various fires, types of you know types of attacks I can do with it give me some maybe tactical different ways to. Uh, approach a certain enemy but yeah that that brute like this thing is maxed out i don't have i don't have that at all, remotely yeah no it's 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 not bad like i can probably i can cut like a limb off in one shot so if i got this one dude in front of me i can usually cut off a leg like with one shot just bam and then bam bam and he's dead that's pretty awesome yeah the um the so the one thing about this game a lot like Resident Evil 4 is it's kind of kind of geared toward multiple playthroughs because like you get the new game plus where you keep all your weapons you keep all your upgrades and stuff like that I think is how this works and um 
I think theoretically you can get everything maxed out if you just keep playing the game. I think yeah, I could be wrong. That would be pretty fun. And um, I, I don't know if you've looked at this, and I don't think I mentioned it on the last episode, but there is a hardest difficulty. Did you look at that at all? No, I haven't. So you have easy, normal, and then hard. And then I think the last one is called insane. And insane is the same difficulty as hard, with the exception of if you die, it's game over, and you only get to save one time. The whole game? The whole game. Oh, damn. So, Dead Space 2... That's not for me. <laughs> you'll see, Dead Space 2 had something like that, too, except, with the exception, that instead of you only get one save, you only get three saves, which was more manageable. Yeah. But this game, the remake, this one is insane. You have to beat this game pretty much in one run, and you get one save, and... I would assume you need to save probably halfway or a little bit more than halfway through the game. And if you die once, it's game over. Yeah, that's crazy. So let's say you didn't get halfway through the game yet and you accidentally died. Whoops. When do you spend it? That's got to be such a critical question in that type of a run through. So there, there, there is a guy on YouTube that I like. His his screen name is Sandwiches, and that is <laughs> all he does. Sandwiches. What's that? Pork chop sandwiches. I guess I don't know. It's his his name's Sandwiches, and he he his his whole shtick is I play games and do the hardest thing I can in them, and he actually did this in Dead Space, and he 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 makes a whole video based on it. Um. And I think he said it was probably one of the more stressful achievements he's ever gotten. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, one one mistake and it's back to either the beginning of the game or where you used your one save. <laughs> it's certainly a way to add tension to a game, right? You, you play a game that's scary. Well, that's scary for a whole different reason. Oh, yeah. No kidding. Not so many times I've actually died in this game it's been a good number Dude. i'd probably say six to eight times i've died i've got killed by a door before yeah. those dumb doors that close and you have to free you have to freeze them and i was low on health and even though it's it's slowly moving in stasis if you if you stand at it it's still going to hurt you and I died there, and I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? And then one time later on in the game, when we had to go outside, I just got completely obliterated by a freaking asteroid. <laughs> it happened to me once. And then that one part where the, the thing's spinning and you got to run by it, I couldn't tell you how many times I died there just because I misstepped. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. But yeah. Um... We'll get to that, but uh, chapter three. Uh, once we get the the engines refueled, um, we got to turn them on. When we're on our way to turning them on, I, I mentioned it in the last recording. It hadn't happened yet. Well, guess what? It happened. Uh, a giant tentacle grabbed a hold of me, and I had to shoot it while I was being dragged. <laughs> I was like, I know yeah, it was definitely. in this game somewhere. I think being held up, once the held upside down thing. I think was Dead Space too. I could be wrong. Mm. You're farther than me, so you may have already seen it. Yeah, I don't know if we get held upside down, but you definitely get attacked multiple times by the tentacle. Yeah, I was gonna say don't don't be coy head. So, at the beginning of Dead Space Three, where you're basically on your back, you're not held by a monster or anything, but like a window blows out and you're on your back and you have to like. You have to shoot something to like drop a shutter so that you don't get shot out into space. Ooh, man, that's a good question. I remember that, but I don't remember what game that was. 
don't remember where it is, but that's that's what this reminded me of. You know, it's something bad's going to happen. You've got a certain amount of time. You're kind of on your back, so the aiming's a little different than it normally is. Mm-hmm. That sounds familiar, though. Yeah. I, can't... I, I remember that that scene, but I, I don't remember exactly where it was. It might have been Dead Space 2, but it, I mean, it could have been, been 3. Two. If it was 3, then it, it, it was me and you yeah. doing it. But, uh, yeah. Um, after being grabbed by the monster, stopping it from pulling us, um, we get the engines back on, and then we um, actually meet back up with Hammond. That's at the beginning of Chapter 4. And Hammond is basically telling us that, well, now that we've stopped us from falling to the planet, now we got a bigger issue. Uh, and, and is it chunks of the planet that's hitting the ship, or is it just asteroids? I thought it was just asteroids. Okay. Um, they say it's an asteroid shower, I think. Yeah. I mean... Who knows in the the far reaches of space, but I've always heard that like the asteroid belt is like you know multi miles, many 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 miles away from each other. <laughs> when you always think, oh, we're going through an asteroid field, yeah, it's not really that big of a deal. <laughs> Mostly gaps. Yeah, but um, yeah, asteroids are pelting the 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 ship, and we got to stop them from from attacking. Now, the the ship is usually um being protected uh by this sort of thing because of the um the automatic guns, the turrets. Um and but they've been brought offline, so we got to turn them back online. So um is this where we first run into the brute Um, we first run into the brute in that big room. Yeah, I that's, think that's it kind is of like here. our hub for the next couple of chapters. Yeah. yeah, because we basically, you've got a central elevator shaft, and we have to go up to there to do all the power rerouting. Yeah. And that's when we meet the brute. That brute, did you have any issues with him? Uh, no, he certainly looks intimidating, but... I mean, especially this first time you fight him, there's so much space that it's pretty easy to stasis him, get behind him, and just unload, and that's it. Yeah, because his weak parts are in the back. Um, I don't know. I mean, technically, are you still severing limbs here? I mean, he's so compact that it's... It's hard to cut stuff off. I think he does have a tail that you can cut off. And I know you can't technically cut his legs off. I haven't done it, I don't think, because I've just kind of unloaded into his back space because he's got three or four orange spots back there. Right. I haven't really come in with that love, that level of precision. Well, he's always rushing you, too, and it's hard to do. Mm. Even and I do feel like by the time I get behind him, stasis is basically done, so you only get like a, two seconds or so. Right. I guess I could just stasis him a second time. but Yeah. But, um, yeah, we got to go different floors. So there's like this main, like, I think it's called, is it it called an atrium? I don't know what it's called. Um, but, um, there's elevators going up and down and we have to reroute the power to the guns. Um, it's a lot of back and forth here. Um, go up, go to a floor. Fix the fix them. Usually turning off lights, and then going back down, going to a different floor, doing the same thing, kind of thing. And in between, you this know. is the kind of thing where if you only played this game, let's say, fifteen minutes at a time, I feel like this is the type of level that would be very confusing. Yeah, you're like, all right, my goal doing. is to go into this room and flip something. All right, next time I pick it up, my goal is to go into a room and flip something. I like. But I've done the same thing like six times now. Like if you play it all in one section, it, you know, it, it, it makes sense. You got to do X, you know, I got to do multiple things. But again, it, 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 it just rubs me just a little bit the wrong way because it's, it's a bit repetitive. Yeah, it is. I'll tell you what, what got me. God, this is, this is annoying. 
so those battery packs that you sometimes have to grab and put them into place yeah i grabbed one of them and then there was a monster so i I just threw the battery pack at him do you understand it took me like 10 minutes to find where that fucking battery pack landed i couldn't find (laughs) it i couldn't find i was like where is this thing I, i ran around this entire room for like 10 minutes trying to find this thing i finally found it it was in a freaking corner somewhere and picked it up and just threw it out of it. I was like, man, like this is just annoying. It annoyed the crap out of me. That's that's one place where, you know, if you could turn the lights off, it, it might help because those things kind of glow blue. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I had that once, I think, later than this. I think there's one you have to pick up, and it was it was in a destroyed room, and I think it was, like, elevated and in some rubble, and I, I, did, I didn't see it for a, a little bit. So... Getting the guns back online. Now we got to go calibrate them, which means we got to go out. We got to spacewalk. We got to go outside and physically go to the guns and then calibrate them. The first time I got hit by an asteroid and had to start over. Um, the second time I made it to one of the guns and could not figure out how to shoot, how to, how to calibrate it. Yep. And I was like, I was shooting my plasma cutter, and I was like, what the heck? Like, like, what do I do? Well, I find out you had to press A to make it shoot at the asteroids. So you have to make, you have to aim the gun to make it shoot at the asteroids. And then after probably about like four or five, it gets calibrated. Well, there's three guns in all you got to get calibrated. And on top of that, you're outside in the vacuum, so you don't have it. You have to watch your oxygen. And then the last gun is when you start getting attacked by stuff. So I'm trying to calibrate this gun. I'm trying to not suffocate. And now I'm getting attacked by monsters. And I was just like, oh, God. Once I got it calibrated, that's all I worried about. Get it calibrated. And then I was like, screw it. I'm booking it back to the entrance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I did. I was like, I don't care where these monsters are. They can they can stay out here for all I care. Yeah, the first time I did it, I went through. I activate the first gun, activate the second gun, activate the third gun. Nothing happened. I'm like, what the heck? What do I have to do now? And I didn't realize you have to activate, then calibrate, then go to the next one, activate, then calibrate. The um, biggest, you know. By then, I had been hit so many times. I'm like, I just let myself die. Then I think the second time I got hit by a by an asteroid. Then the third time I just got hit so much that I think I just was killed by the little tentacle aliens or tentacle monsters. Yeah. The so yeah, I, I died definitely. I think three or four times just in this section. There was a, oh man, this one, this, there was this one part where we were trying to get the guns back online. We had to change the power to them and we're in like this, it looks like it reminded me of like a server room and there's like electrical currents like going through certain panels. Floor. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I couldn't, I mean, there was so many times. So at the end of this hallway, there's a brute that shows up and you got to fight him. Okay. So I was like, I'm going to be sneaky. I'm going to make him run into this electrical current and and bada beam, bada boom. No. If you run past him and you go past the electrical current, the electrical current just stays there. It doesn't stop. And I was like, I've soft locked the game. So I just walked through the electrical current and got killed and had to start it over. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing wrong here? Because that room, that one's a little bit more hectic because that room's smaller. Yeah, definitely. But th- by, by that point, I had, I had beef, beefed up the, the plasma cutter, and I was like, okay, I can handle this guy. Not a problem. Just, you know, bang, bang, bang. And, I th- and it, there's one part where I had to fight two brutes. I think it's whenever you come back to the atrium part area. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's back there. Yeah. And that was a little bit more hectic, but, you know, as long as I, you know, focused in on one guy, it was okay. Um, yeah, this level, I mean, it, it did some interesting things. You know, I, I like being out there calibrating the guns, I guess, just because it was different. You know, you've got this room with the, you know, electrical floor panels. but But also... This one and I think the next level are the two marquee ones where I'm like, how does this bit tie into the main story? 
Right. I, I the first the first few levels seem logical to me. Right? Okay. Like fixing the tram because you can't get around. You know, trying to get back to the Kelly in, but then it blows up. You know, needing the captain's rig to unlock doors. This stuff all makes sense. The en- getting the engines back online for me is maybe halfway. Like there's it doesn't really tie to the main story, but I guess it's a it's a pretty clear outcome of the ship kind of getting abandoned by everybody. Right. So that makes sense. But now the asteroid shower is just out of left field. It's random. It has nothing to do with the story. Well, I think it was just another crisis we had to deal with because the, the hole was going to blow up if we don't. That's where I feel like they could have just engineered as many crises as they wanted to. Like the the first few levels all like logically almost would have to happen in this scenario and it feels more cohesive to me. Right. The asteroid shower, you know, or or you know, some of the other ones are are a little bit like I don't, it, not necessarily padding because you know, they they do interesting things in them, you know, there, there are some outdoor bits and again other parts that make the level interesting so it doesn't feel repetitive in that sense but it it does feel a little bit disconnected i'd say from the the core story sure and you said the next part feels like it's not part of the story um well the the next part is 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 pretty tied in i think the whole chapter five makes some sense because it's kind of you know, it's it, it's kind of tied tied to your character, tied to his personal reason for being there. Gotcha. I haven't done it yet. I just I had the the one lady tell me you need to go back to medical. So I need to go back to medical, and that's where I stopped. So I know I need to play more of this. I tell you. I haven't been scared yet. I remember Dead Space 1 being scarier. I I agree with that. I, I yeah. feel like Dead Space 1 was scarier. I'm going to say at this point in the game, it's nothing that this game's doing wrong. It's just that We're I already played it. Dead Space. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I kind of know what Dead Space is now. So, it, it, you know, without that tease of there are things here that you haven't seen before. I kind of have that sense of, yeah, I, I can do this. You know, I've done this before. I can do it again. And I'm, I feel like I'm far more, even though I'm only using a single gun, I feel like I'm far more equipped to handle everything than Leon S. Kennedy. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I have run out of ammo, but I've never, I've never run out of ammo and had, had that cost me to be like, oh shit, I can't do the next battle. Right. You know, I've you know, especially, you know, with, with four guns, I I actually the thing I've been doing lately and, and maybe this is why I, I feel kind of like a badass is most of the money that I've been spending at the shops has been to buy ammo. Mostly actually for my plasma cutter. Because that's the one I always want to use and can't seem to rely on because I don't find enough ammo in the environment. So yeah. Most of my money has been buying ammo, but because I can just do that, uh, I feel like I can take on any enemy that they throw at me. I, I fear I've I have video gamed this video game because once you put <laughs> once you put a gun in storage, there's no more ammo that drops for that gun. So if I only have one gun on me, guess what it's going to be? <laughs> yeah. So it's either health. Credits or plasma energy. And that's all I need. So, yeah. I I have never ran out of ammo in this game. So, I feel like... Interesting. And, and, and I guess that, that ties into part of the scariness, too. Because I sure it would be more scary if I didn't have ammo for my guns. And I've got, like, two monsters in front of me. Um, because monsters hit hard. That's, that's one thing I will give this game. You can only take probably about three hits and you're dead. And so, I mean, that, that's probably me also not putting nodes into my hit points. I'm, I'm putting nodes into my damage. I am the glass cannon. 
So that's. Do you have a lot of health packs on you at any kind of average time? I typically keep like the small med packs. They just give me like a little tick. I probably keep about three of those on me. And if I find a medium med pack, I'll be like, yeah, I'll. I'll. And the thing is, you can't choose which one you're going to use. When I hit heal, it just chooses one for me, it seems like. Well, interesting. See, that's a thing that I haven't dealt with because I'm still, you know, still playing it on the PC, still playing it with mouse and keyboard. I have to still very awkwardly open up my menu and select which one I'm using oh. all while things are happening around me. Yeah, I just hit the B button. I hit the B button and it automatically heals me. It just uses a healing item. I, I think, I guess I could go through the inventory and, and automatically choose just a small health pack, but um, I haven't. There's be logic to it, right? Small to large or based on how much you need. Like if you needed a large, maybe it would use a large first. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it works. I just hit the button and I see, oh, it gave me a tick. I hit it again. Yeah, that kind of thing. So it's it doesn't really bother me that much when it comes yeah, to I like to see though that I only had one tick left and then it used like a triple health pack. Yeah, I haven't ran into those yet. Oh, that would be a pain. <laughs> I did I did get the schematic for buying a medium health pack, and I have occasionally been at the store and said, "Hey, I'll buy a medium just in case," you know. Yeah. So typically, I have about three healing items on me, and the rest is ammo. I feel like I've been using a lot of healing items, so I, I would say typically I don't have any. Um, sometimes I'll build up two or three or four, but you know, a couple encounters and, and they're gone. So I'd say usually I'm pretty well stocked on ammo, but maybe I'm averaging one health pack at any given time. It, I feel like the game we, you know, we give Resident Evil Four a lot of credit for you know giving us exactly what we need at the right time. I think I think Dead Space does it too. Like you know. I'm I'm low on health. I don't have any health packs or anything like that. That, that occasionally I'll be like, oh, good, one of them dropped for me, you know that kind of thing. So it, 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 there is some kind of inventory RNG going on in there somewhere, you know. It, it, I don't think yeah, it's certainly as, it's not as profound or, or pronounced, I should say, of um, like like Resident Evil Four is, but um, there's definitely something in play there. Um, Doesn't uh, the to, does the walkthrough prescribe though? I thought it prescribed exactly which pickups were. No, it probably doesn't. Because I don't think I've ever seen it say, "Oh, you're gonna you're gonna have three containers that are all credits." So it, it must be based on what you need. To I, some th degree. I think it is. I think it is. So, and I think I've just screwed up their RNG completely by just holding one gun <laughs> at a time. So. It's just like I, I guess give him more ammo. <laughs> I don't know. We've given him, we've given him a lot of one hundred credits. Yeah, because those don't go very far. No, they do not. Picking up thirteen of those just to get six rounds in your plasma cutter is crazy to me. Well, uh, I guess that's that's a bad economy nowadays. So. But yeah, um, but yeah, chapter five, uh, at the very beginning of it, I stopped. So I have, um, I have nothing else to talk about. Um, check and see if I got any emails, no emails this week. I mean, I get it. It's, it's the holiday season time. So, uh, if you would like to send an email though, it's drew at ztgd.com. Uh, you can also tweet to us. I am at DML Fury. Matt is at REMGS, and the podcast itself is at ZTGD Phoenix Down. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm still thoroughly enjoying this game. I feel like, it, it, obviously, I'm going point to point, completing objectives. I feel like the, the 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 carrot on the stick for me is finding those weapon upgrades. Even though I'm only using one 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 upgrade, there's always those. Ooh, here's a little thing I can pick up. You know, it may be a, a semiconductor or something, or or anything really. Um, you know, with with Resident Evil, it was all about you know getting enough money to to do those weapon upgrades and stuff like that. And I feel like this has it here. It's just not as it's just not as impactful, I should say. 
you know, even though the, the special upgrades for the weapons seem to be really cool, you know, that, that are significant. Yeah, it's interesting that you can buy the nodes. I think I've only I have bought one node, I think that's it. Yeah. But it's too. interesting if your if your approach was to go all in on upgrades, would you would you spend more of your money on nodes? Probably. Or do you even need to if you're only working on one gun? Because you, you yeah. might you probably get plenty to upgrade that in your in your rig. Yeah, I've, I've never had to. I've never had to. Um, my my goal is to get the plasma cutter completely maxed out, and then probably start putting nodes into like my rig if I find a rig. See, that's the thing. I'm always afraid I'm going to run into like a, a new level rig, and I don't want to put any nodes into it. Because I know I'm for a fact now, if it's the same upgrade path see, for your rig, that's the thing. I don't think so because that that's what got me about it was that I went from the the stand the, the level one the one I started with, and when I went to the level two, I know for a fact I had two nodes into my my level one rig, and when I looked at my rig when I went to a bench, there was no nodes there. It was like a whole new skill tree, yeah. if you want to call it that. Yeah, see, I also looked at, you know, can I, should I pull my notes back out? And I thought about going only down the, the plasma cutter route, but it was something 5,000, 10,000, some, some number of credits that you have to pay to, to respect basically. Mm. I was Um, like, "Ah, I'm not going to save up all that money just to respect. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Save that for a new game plus or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing is like I I kind of want to do a new game plus and max out everything. I, I said that with Resident Evil Four, and of course I haven't went back to it. But I don't know. Like I feel like Dead Space is easier. It definitely feels easier. Yeah, it feels easier. It may not be as easy, easy, easier than Resident Evil Four. But it, it just comes off as easier to me, Ma- mainly because I guess I, I, I kind of expect what's coming. All right, there's going to be a monster here. There's probably going to be a monster behind me. You know, there's been a few times where I'm just like, oh, I hear music. I wasn't expecting this, but all right, you know. But it's nothing like, oh crap, I have got a lot of guys around me and I have nothing to protect myself. I haven't. I feel like I haven't been in grave danger like I have in Resident Evil. It's interesting, also, because it doesn't let you save at any time, but the saves are pretty well placed. So that even when I do die, I feel like there's two things that make it le- like that make the, the the death, I guess, itself less scary or less impactful. One is that. With all those save locations, I feel like I'm never more than... I mean, oftentimes I'll save and it'll only have been three minutes since my last save. Sometimes it's 15, 16 minutes, but I don't think it's ever been a half an hour since my last save. Yeah. In most games, I feel like if I know I've been playing for 20, going on 30 minutes without a save, I start to get antsy just because of that. I'm like, all right, I don't want one bad thing here to ruin a half an hour and I have to repeat it all. Exactly. So that, like... The number of saves, you're not limited. You know, you can save a thousand times if you want to, right? Mm-hmm. There's no limitation. You're not you're not waiting for your ink ribbons to be able to save. So I think that reduces the, the scare factor or the impact a little bit. And also, even though I'd say I've died a fair number of times in this game, it's never really been because the part was too hard. Maybe once or twice there's been a couple of rooms where I... I didn't approach it the right way, and I died, but even then, you don't even have to go all the way back to your save. It'll usually just reload at the last... Checkpoint. There's still a checkpoint auto, system. Auto checkpoint. Yeah, there's still checkpoints. So you're not losing much time. You can go right back into that same room and try it again, and uh, as you pointed out, you, you die so quickly that you can only make one or two bad decisions, and then you're dead. Uh, but if you repeat it and you don't make those decisions, you're probably going to come out just fine and probably not get hit at all because mm-hmm. usually it's either I'm, I, I get hit a lot or I don't get hit at all. And, you know, the fact that you can repeat so easily, you can probably get through it unscathed. You're not really losing that much. I think all of that reduces the 
the tension, if not the scariness of the game, the tension of playing the game. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with that one. The checkpoint system, I think, makes a difference. If I if I was if I were to die and had to go back to my last save, that would be significantly different, I think. And there has been a few times where, like, like when we were in that room, the server room with the electrical stuff, I had to start at the beginning of that room, and I'm just like, man. Like, couldn't you give me a checkpoint for whenever I ran into the brute? You know? Yeah. <laughs> but then again... Like, even that, you get good at it, and it's only a minute and a half, two minutes yeah, to get to that max, point. Max, max. It was to yeah. a point where I was, I was, I could time it to where all the monsters in there before the brute was getting shocked instead of me using my ammo. Yeah. So, like, it's... I, I need to stop complaining. <laughs> and I'd say that's good, right? Because it, it reduces the frustration of the game, but... In some ways, maybe it does tick it a little bit too much towards the you, you've you've removed a lot of the tension of the game. Maybe even more than would be optimal. Maybe I should have played this on a harder difficulty. I guess there's always that too. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like I remember playing Dead Space Two, if I remember correctly, um, the first time I played Dead Space Two, and the reason why I didn't finish that I didn't finish that game the first time I bought it and had to replay it for Phoenix Down was because I started the game on what they call Zealot Mode, which was, I think, the hardest difficulty besides the three-save mode. And just... and I was just like, I got to a point where I was like, I can't beat this. Like, there's too many enemies. I don't have enough ammo. So maybe it is one of those things of, if I want to be more challenged, I need to, I need to play on a harder difficulty. You change it on the fly? I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure. I don't. I don't think I've I've come across that as an option, but I haven't yeah. looked for it. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't either. Um, I don't know if you can. I, 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 that doesn't sound right to me, though, especially in a modern game like this. Most modern games will allow you to change the difficulty on the fly. Yeah. It would be tough if you just got stuck and you're like, "Well, I, I can't finish this game now because I can't get past this one part." Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they give you the option. So I know the option um, uh, for the insane playthrough. So let's say I haven't made my save, my one save yet, and I died. They give you the option to, all right, game over, or we drop you down to hard mode and you have your saves, but you can't get credit for beating it on insanity. So they give you that option just in case weird thing for me there is like you probably wouldn't in my mind i'm like if you're going on that crazy high level you're going for that specifically not to play through the game right i assume right. if you do if you if you do that you've already played through the game at some point i would think so i don't think anybody's starting a fresh playthrough on that mode i yeah. could be wrong i'm sure there's somebody out there who did that yeah but i i'd love to know the thought process there that's like, I mean, that's a hard Are you just course. so good at video games that you need that challenge? Or is it just a, this is a scary game. I want it to be as scary as possible. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like that, like think about the play session though, unless you just hit pause and, and went to work, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, like, you know, I'm not to my save yet. I'm not to where the guide told me to save my game. So I don't know. You got to be strategic with it. I guess you could always just pause the game and come back to it later. Or, or start it on a Friday night and be like, all right, I'm doing one thing this weekend. Yeah. I don't have that luxury anymore. <laughs> so. Those used to be some dedicated weekends. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, are you kidding me? If I was in my early 20s, I would totally be going for that and would probably fail and be mad at myself. <laughs> so... I don't know. Maybe one of these days I'll try to do an insanity playthrough of Dead Space. <laughs> I highly doubt it, though. But one um, is smoother. I feel like this would be, if not easier to do it with, I, I feel like I would have everything within my within my ability to do it. You know, I'll be like, well, if, if I died, it's my fault. You know, the game's polished enough that... You know, I haven't haven't had any weird bugs of like getting stuck on walls. I've been disoriented a lot in some of the zero G sections, but I haven't had any real bugs with this game yet. 
I haven't, I haven't either. Except for that one where, you know, I was trying to uh, do the do the game dirty and have the brute walk into <laughs> yeah. the electricity, and they were like, "No, you can't do that." So I think that was Which just is weird because the game set you up to do that on the other necromorph, so it's not outside the realm of what you would expect someone to try. Yeah, I don't know, but um, that's fine. I was able to handle the brute. I don't even know why I tried. But uh, yeah, that's um, I think that's it. We're gonna. Yeah, I'm still enjoying it. I, I mean, my I feel like I haven't had the highest of highs, but I haven't had any real lows. You know, I'm just kind of kind of enjoying it, playing through it. You know, I usually been sitting down for say 45 minutes at a time, playing through a good chunk of a level, more than half a level. Uh, early on, I was playing through a couple of full levels. I'd do a level and then I'd stop, I'd come back and try to do one full level and then I'd stop. Uh, it's been a little bit more scattered lately, but definitely, definitely enjoying it still. Good. Yeah, me too. But that's uh, that's going to be it for us. Thank you all for listening. I really do appreciate it. Um, I guess we'll be back uh, next week. It'll be after Christmas, so uh, the nightmare after Christmas. But that's okay. All of our horror games during Christmas go into usually the new year, if we're being honest. But that's okay. That's that's totally fine. Um, but until next time, I'm Drew, and I'm Matt, and we are out of here. Hope you guys have a great one. Have a great week. Happy holidays. Whatever you celebrate, uh, stay safe out there. And we'll be back next week with the continuation of Dead Space.